and Phil Cherokee. Welcome back. So last time I was working on uh, tuning up the engine, I was trying to get this uh, PID controller um, in there for the high pressure fuel pump dialed in, but it turns out there's actually another problem that uh, that was just trying to fix, really. And still finding out some more information even late this afternoon, but it seems like the injectors can't be driven at the high pressure that I want by the MoTeC ECU, at least not with the current parameters. So we'll see what happens, um, and I'll have more information on that in the later in the video here. And I may have to go back to uh, using the lower pressure on the fuel pump. Cherokee Track Experimental 2 Tango Delta Clear of 5, Cherokee. And I spent quite a bit of time working on trying to solve this problem. I was there uh, Saturday doing runs and then analyzing the data and doing some more runs and then Sunday morning doing some runs and then analyzing the data and then doing some more runs in the afternoon. Um, you know, just, just trying to figure out what's going on because what ends up happening is, and you'll see a little bit later on, uh, when I run it up to a higher power setting um, where it goes into the higher uh, fuel pressure, the, it's like the injectors are cutting off and the engine just sort of starts quitting and then of course that runs up the pressure on the fuel rail and er everything else sort of cascades backwards from there and back to idle so anyway I'll give you more details here shortly but this is just to show you um, one of the run-ups that I did there on uh, Monday afternoon So there you can hear the abrupt um, drop in RPM because of that. Uh, anyway, I've got to keep pushing on. I can't sort of uh, just go backwards on that. So uh, the other thing I did on Monday was I uh, figured it was time to close out uh, these covers there for the, the parachute. And then on the other side, there's a little small one for where one of the straps comes out. Um, so I got everything sorted out in here as best I could. All this has to come out of here when the parachute or if the parachute ever deploys. Uh, but I didn't want it to tape it down too much, but I didn't want it sort of flopping around in there if you hit bumps and turbulence. So I've just put some real um, loose masking tape around a couple of bits there just so it won't sort of flop around too much. And uh, that should be enough. And then masked off around the area where I, I was going to put the little uh, glue to glue that panel in place. But keep in mind that panel needs to be able to blow out of there, um, you know, if the rocket gets launched. So I uh, got that all set up. And this is what it looked like once it's done. So there's the one on the other side there. It's just a small little panel that's all glued in place now. So that would come out just for the strap for that side. And then on this side over here, there's that panel put in place there. So that's another job I could mark off uh, my to-do list that needed to be done before, well before first flight. So the next job was to get the cowling and the spinner on so I can do some testing and see what, uh, if any, heat issues I have uh, with that on uh, just to make sure that the engine is not, you know, getting too hot and likewise the cowling not getting too hot with the heat sort of uh, underneath it. So anyway, as you can see, this is the pretty much the finished look now. Everything's on. Parachute strap covers and cowling upper and lower and the spinner. And uh, that's why I was just giving you a little slow walk around here so you can take it all in just to get the overall look. Now, unfortunately, I've got the, um, the intake scoop open all the way there and also the cowling vent under the bottom of the cowling there open. And I uh, promise next time I'll get some video with that closed all the way down or at least as far down as it goes. But, uh, yeah, it's looking really good. And uh, this is, you know, having the cowling on now as a test and I'll have it off again, obviously, because I'm going to be tearing down the redrive after I put a whole bunch more hours on it just to have a quick look inside before first flight and make sure that there's no, uh, you know, no problems with it. Um, make sure, you know, the, all the bearings are looking good and stuff in there. So the cowling will come off again, obviously. 
Uh, but the spinner, there's no reason really to take that off. Uh, the only thing that um, having it on stops you from doing is adjusting the flat pitch of the prop. And I don't really have any intention of doing that. I want to keep the prop with the flat pitch setting right now. Uh, that way it can act as a good uh, air brake when you pull it into idle. Uh, if I adjusted the pitch any more coarse, um, you definitely wouldn't get as much drag out of it when you pull it back to idle. So uh, I think it would be advantageous to have that ability to slow it down. Uh, anyway, so this is what it all looks like. So I took it across the runway again and uh, did some more tests because I had a little bit more new information about what things to try uh, with the ECU to try and uh, solve this problem of running with the higher uh, pressures on the fuel pump and uh, did a few more runs and then uh, in the afternoon uh, today I ended up getting some more information from Les which may or may not be um, you know pertinent to what my problem is but I think um, if I don't have a solution to uh, this you know trying to run the fuel pump at a higher pressure um, in the next uh, day I'm just going to focus on uh, keeping it back at the 95 meg megapascals that I had before because uh, it was running fine then and I'll just put all the tuning information in there that I put in um, you know already that's actually made you know lots of improvements and uh, just work from there just to hone it in so and I may end up you know seeing if there's an, you know, an aftermarket set of injectors that I could run or something like that just to get the higher fuel pressure but if I can get the power there without the smoke uh, just by dialing in the tuning then it may be all right but I know I'll be leaving some power on the table if I can't run it up to 195 um, megapascals on the fuel pressure so anyway this is what it look, looked like when I was doing some runs here so I'll let you uh, watch this and I'll narrate from the cabin Right, I'm going to do some more test runs here. I've lowered the fuel pressure again to 115 just to see if I can get a nice stable run where nothing happens um, where the engine dropped off, so we'll see how we go here. Got a flat pop. I'll add pitch on the next run. PSI, 100, 3600 RPM. Alright, that was looking pretty stable. Try adding some prop this time. Angel and engines are idling a little rough now that uh, I've done some of these changes. I'll have to fix that later on. Now let's let the engine cool down a little bit there from that little run. 204 on the coolant. 189 on the oil, so the oil hasn't even come up to temperature yet. I'm just going to do a couple runs today and then uh, go out on the runway for a little bit there and uh, see how things feel in terms of you know putting a load on it and taking it down the runway. Alright, just added a bit of prop there, we'll see how that works for us. Should come in about 35, 34. 
going to there. Watching the EGTs and the boost pressure. Start to feel the smoking coming in the engine there. Like that off. Yeah, I can just start to feel something feels like there's a little bit of um, just roughness in the engine, just a tiny bit, and that's kind of like the uh, the start of where this problem happens, but I think now that I've got the fuel pressure turned down, I'm not going to have the problem. Um, it's only when I set it to go over 120, or around about 120, that it triggers it. So now I just want to adjust my throttle setting so my max throttle is not too crazy for going out on the runway because I want to do a kind of like a full power run but I don't want to um, over boost it now that I've got the extra power in here, at least not initially. Like the rain clouds are coming again. Get a, get a couple runs and get out of here. Slow one here, just to build out the engine now with the new settings.
the governor. Oh, there it is again. And it just doesn't want to cooperate. <sighs> Frustrating. Well, at least I'm getting some good data. she said, at least for today, so I can figure out what's going on with this tuning. Thanks for watching. Thank you, traffic. Some have two, three, three, four, four, left car from the family. Sam, checking. And since that was recorded, I got a little bit more information, as I said, about some injector parameters that we might be able to change still, or possibly change out injectors, so... I'll let you know how that goes in the next update, and here I'm just checking to see uh, what sort of heat is coming there in the cowling um, above there where the where the exhaust comes out of the second turbo, and uh, it wasn't bad really, and that's after it sort of settling down, settling down there for a little bit, and so I put my little temp gauge there that I got, 152 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's certainly not going to really cause any problems uh, with that cowling, so it should be alright. Um, I don't think it got much hotter than that, actually, to tell you the truth. So the heat shielding's working well. Anyway, that's the update for the first half of this week. I'll let you know uh, how things turn out with the tuning uh, on Saturday. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.